we really do like to think on a seven generations time frame. And my my hope is that the the impacts that we're creating through our work, through our tech, through through an key, uh, I, I won't be around to to realize uh, those impacts. Hello and welcome to Love as a Business Strategy, a podcast that brings humanity to the workplace. We're here to talk about business, but we want to tackle topics that most business leaders shy away from. We believe that humanity and love should be at the center of every successful business. I'm your host, Jeff Ma, and as always, I'm here to have conversations and hear stories from real people, real businesses, and real life. And our guest today is a trailblazer in the tech world and an inspiring leader for indigenous entrepreneurship and innovation. I'm thrilled to introduce to you another Jeff, Jeff Ward. And Jeff is the founder and CEO of Animiki Indigenous Technology, a leading digital agency that pioneers social innovation through indigenous technology. And in 2003, Jeff had a vision for an enterprise that would uplift his family, communities, and indigenous peoples. Today, that vision is Animiki, a certified B Corp and CCAB certified indigenous business. And this the values that guide Jeff's work are deeply rooted in indigenous knowledge, particularly the seven grandfather teachings from the Anishinaabe culture, reflecting a powerful commitment to building meaningful relationships with clients, partners, and employees alike, which gets me really excited to talk about. A web designer, software developer, author, and speaker, Jeff is also a board member for their Aboriginal People's Television Network. His multifaceted experience and commitment to his community is perhaps most clearly demonstrated in Nimiki's social impact statement. The company is dedicated to creating equitable outcomes for indigenous peoples, using technology as a tool for driving social change and economic justice. In 2019, Jeff was also recognized as part of Business in Vancouver's Top 40 Under 40 for his transformative work. So with that, I love to welcome Jeff Ward to the conversation. Jeff, how are you doing today? Great, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you here. And just the intro alone, um, so many exciting things I wanna touch. And before I can dive into that, you know, I really just wanna hear from you first, a, a little bit about your story. I, I know I'm sure there's many twists and turns to it, but I, I, I maybe I'll center it around your passion. What are you passionate about? And, and what's the story arc that brought you to where you sit with that passion today? Mm -hmm. um, it's a good question. Um, first, I'll tell you a little bit about where I'm from. And I think this might uh, kind of frame the conversation, uh, my upbringing as well. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm originally from Manitoba, which is in central Canada. And I my background is on my uh, dad's side, I'm Ojibwe and Métis and on my mom's side, English and Ukrainian. And I grew up uh, participating in, in my culture, attending ceremonies, um, dancing, uh, powwows, and you know, uh, making regalia and, and growing up uh, with, within that community. And um, you know, flash forward many, many, many years later, um, you know, I wanted to um, actually be a doctor my whole life. And, uh, uh, somebody made the mistake to uh, pay me to make a website and uh, family's uh, hopes and dreams of having the first family doctor went out the window. Um, that uh, led to me uh, going to uh, California, working in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley during the whole dot-com boom. Um, and as a young person down there, it being a very materialistic, capitalistic uh, environment, um, when I did move back to Canada, I wanted to utilize my skills that I had learned over the past, uh, you know, few years, and uh, to support the communities that I was raised within, and uh, you know, hopefully create tech uh, technology solutions. And, and for me, that's you know, websites and software and that kind of thing. I wanted to create those um, that tech from a bit of a different perspective, uh, from an indigenous perspective, and to support the communities that um, that I was raised within. Um, and, uh, so yes, what I'm, I'm passionate about, I'm passionate about using technology to support, uh, indigenous innovators, amplify their voices and amplify their impact. Um, and our, our choice, our tool of choice at Animiki is, is technology. 
Um, and so for us, that means yeah, building websites and apps and, and products um, um, that can support uh, all of these uh, you know, social innovators, indigenous innovators. Um, and, and along the way, also wanting to uh, support in, uh, young indigenous people to choose technology and entrepreneurship as a career path. Um, and so, you know, started the company in 2003 um, and we've always had an Indigenous focus and um, yeah, so we've been able to support people from across uh, North, so-called North America or Turtle Island as we, as we say. And um, yeah, that's uh, kind of answer your question, what I'm passionate about. It's using tech as a force for good and supporting Indigenous peoples and, and other, uh, other groups that have been marginalized through tech as well. That's amazing. And I have to know uh, the seven grandfather teachings from the, on a, uh, and I, I, I had to ask you before this how to pronounce it. And I, I know I worry I still butcher it, but the, the Anishinaabe culture, if, if that's close. Um, yeah. I really, really, really curious if you could highlight what those teachings are and then how they, how they really reflect into your commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Wearing the shirt podcast oh, listeners nice. won't be able to see, but love, <laughs> truth, respect, wisdom, courage, honesty, and, and humility. And, uh, you know, we'll try to, um, so these, this is a, a, a teaching, uh, a framework, uh, for, really for people to live a, a life of, uh, I mean, in our teachings, uh, we, we call it Mino Bamadzwan or living a good life. And there's a lot of teachings, some other things you may have heard of, like the medicine wheel um, and, and these values and just um, so many teachings and concepts that, um, you know, these teachings, you know, these are the English uh, words for these teachings, but behind each of these, there's uh, really a lifetime of learning of, of these teachings that um, you know, I'll spend the rest of my life uh, continuing to learn uh, as I kind of, you know, reclaim my language and, um, and my culture um, and, and learn from, from knowledge keepers. And so for each of these, these words, there's entire knowledge systems and teachings around, like there's an animal connected for, for each, each of them. There are stories, there are, there are these, you know, sort of, um, yeah, there, so there's so much to, to kind of just, you know, list the seven of them. There, there's just so much of a, yeah, a, a knowledge, uh, I don't know, keeping their knowledge structure. So, um, you know, so these are cultural teachings from my culture, Anishinaabe culture um, or Ojibwe culture. And so when it came time to, you know, grow my company and thinking about, okay, you know, most companies, they'll do the, you know, the, four-day offsite retreat and they'll figure out what's our mission and our vision and they'll figure out their values and they'll maybe vote on the values or whatever um, and figure out, you know, what, just pick, pick some things that, you know, we want to stand for as a company. Well, for me, um, I said, you know, let's, let's use this traditional knowledge framework and see how we can apply these values into our day to day, our day, -to -day as, as a tech company, as an indigenous focused company. And, you know, love is uh, one of the, the values, one of the teachings that um, sort of uh, weave all of them together. At, and um, so, yeah, we've, we've centered love uh, in our company and, and we talk about love quite a bit. Um, you know, it, it's not uncommon for us to have these conversations, you know, internally to write about it, to share it um, with, uh, with our partners and our customers and, and the world. And so, yeah, we're trying to find uh, ways to decolonize business and bring uh, some of these in, uh, indigenous values to um, to the workplace and to policy and to technology. That's amazing. And I can't help but wonder, like, can you give some ex examples, some more, um, I guess, tangibility around what you mean and the vision behind um, decolonizing technology and applying this like change because I, th I think we all in this world understand at least our own view of what technology as a whole is it's just a word that has so many meanings already but then to combine it with kind of applying the cultural element and kind of making a change to uh, the, the way it is now what 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 is it today and what are you hoping to change it into 
Yeah, it's a good point on the word technology because it does, you know, have a lot of uh, baggage to it, a lot of different perspectives to it when you use a kind of broad term like that. I mean, for us as uh, an indigenous focused technology company, we're trying to change the narrative uh, and hopefully be a good example of like what an indigenous tech company is and really share with the world that indigenous people have always been technologists. We've always been inventors and scientists and, and, you know, and, and now we make web apps and, and design data systems. And, um, and even on the note of data, like we've data is, is not a new concept, uh, to us, like there's there's data in the land, and there's data in stories, and there's data in um, how we, uh, you know, in our in our regalia and our cultural teachings and and this kind of thing. So, really trying to um, get people thinking a little bit differently about technology, just just in general, and, and indigenous people's um, contributions to technology. And we're trying to, uh, and there is a, a community out there of you know uh, emerging bright indigenous technologists that are really leading the change in so many different ways. Um, and for, for us in the tech that we build, um, I mean, the, a lot of technology uh, out there, um, spe speaking specifically about like the kind of tech that we build, so web, web apps and, and software and that kind of thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, division and separation and transactional nature to tech. Um, where you know the people element, the people behind the tech, maybe are aren't as visible, or 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 it isn't as as obvious, or those conversations. And what I would find interesting about this emergence of AI and all these conversations that are coming out is, you know, what the harm and the bias, the things that are built into into tech, like like AI, for example, that can cause harm when you have when you just think that. Um, if we imagine that tech is uh, just you know zeros and ones and you know um, you know something that uh, a human didn't design, like that's where the harm I think can can fall. And so we really try to center people and humans in 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 our technology decisions. And for us, that starts with love. And we're building a platform uh, focused around indigenous data sovereignty. And it's the only platform that we know about that has love baked in from the ground up, that has indigenous worldview baked into the technology decisions that we make from the ground up. And so uh, for us, that means, you know, which partners are we supporting? You know, which features do we build? Where is the technology hosted? Which technology solutions do, do we choose? And yeah, we filter those decisions through love, but also through, through all, of our, um, all of our values as well. Very cool. I feel like there's you have the social change side of of the conversation that I'm hearing come through. There's also the kind of and they're connected, but there's also like the business and the the actual um, I guess application within to your technology and your applications. Like, can you I guess describe a little bit more of like how this how this mission plays out as a company? I know you you mentioned there's the, the seven values uh, written on your shirt, which is very handy. Uh, but is that is that more so playing through how the employees treat themselves and their work first? Is it more so your you know your your spearhead into the the world and how you how you present yourself as a as a positioning in the in the marketplace as well? Or is it all of the above? Where does it where does it really root itself in? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's the key word there is just root. Like we we tr if this is our base for everything, any decision we make, you know, when you're you're so like values aligned and 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 the team is you know uh, aligned with those values and our partners and you know we we talk about it we. Um, you know, when that's at the core of everything, uh, it's that sort of connective uh, tissue that weave, weaves everything together. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, you know, how do we, how, how does it practically look? You know, uh, we, you know, during at the beginning of, of the pandemic, we, you know, I thought I was sending everybody home for two weeks <laughs> yeah. uh, to work from home. Yeah. And, um, 
certainly didn't have a you know a pandemic policy or things like this um and you know we were all we're all afraid what does this mean for us as individuals for our families for our health and for a business as well and how do we support each other and we didn't have a policy uh for for that but but we did have uh love as a value and so going into pandemic it's like okay what is the loving thing to do you can just ask yourself that and and it it, it guides guides everything and so you know we we spent uh, extra time um you know caring for our team ensuring that uh time was spent for the team to be able to care for each other and that we had time to sit with elders and bring in uh, uh people to our team to um you know virtually to to support each other and you know listening to our elders um you know talking about how to show up with love for each other you know we asked one of our elders and they said you know why don't you you set up a you know, a check-in system, like a health buddy system where, you know, people would regularly, you know, make time for coffee check-ins throughout, throughout the, the week and that, that kind of thing. Um, and, and looking at flexibility, you know, everybody's work and home lives became intertwined and, and really leaning back on Indigenous teachings around how people uh, and families and communities would work together. It was never separated where you have, you know, a two hour commute to go to a cubicle and sit there and your family's at home and it's being cared by somebody for, by somebody else. It's, you know, the children and the kids and the family and the people that we, we care for that we're always involved um, in the, uh, right? And so on Zoom, we see, uh, you know, we saw a lot of kids uh show up in in the zoom calls and you know and and we embraced that we said you know what we're going to be in each other's homes let's uh what's the loving thing to do let's make sure that we can allow uh you know for this to happen so like when kids show up like i'll often be the one to put on like emojis and like the filters to like <laughs> entertain the kids like things stop and it's like all focused on on the kids um and and parents and and others that that uh, care care for others you know we um we increased our our flexibility you know we have all kinds of different types of leave now um where people can they have like the the goal was maximum flexibility so that people can feel supported um, in their work and working from home. And we've kept that, you know, even post pandemic and we've even added to it, adding more flexibility so that um, people can, you know, switch to a 0.8 position or a 0.6 and move back and um, back and forth and, um, you know, do compressed work weeks and four day work weeks and, you know, all these kinds of things. So really just kind of, okay, what's the loving thing to do if, if we're all going to be, needing the flexibility and needing to add additional support and care, let's just go with it and, and uh, you know, go as far as we can and hopefully set example for, for others that are looking to, to be a bit more community minded and love based practice. I love that. Uh, it's a great example. And I think it's one of those things that I think people might hear as a story and understand at a surface level, but may not understand also all the work that goes into sustaining these things. I feel like I'll speak from my experience because I'd love your take on it. It's that, especially in, in business and in work, I mean, we're all still human and they're all, there are a lot of, you know, misunderstandings, shortcomings, performance issues, and all these things that make it very still real to be human and in business and in technology and all these things. Um, and I find that the loving thing to do is always the way to go, but it also requires everyone else to input like love back into the equation, right? There's an element of it being easy. It's like I have all this flexible time and I have all these things. And if there's not the relationship and trust to like also reciprocate back to the company and back to the leaders and back to the colleagues, kind of a, a love from, from their end, I've seen that it's easy to, to, have some folks maybe lose their way a little bit um maybe have it you know not not intentionally but maybe get complacent in it or take advantage of of the of the loving kind of policies that get put into place mm -hmm. have you experienced anything of that like that or have you been able to address anything like that in your journey as you you know continue to try to do the loving thing you know i, I imagine you might run across some such circumstances like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we think about 
social enterprise because we're, we operate as a B Corp. We're the first indigenous B Corp in Canada and the second in North America. And so we, we think about social enterprise and that word in itself, social and enterprise can almost seem at odds with each other, right? Like you've got, uh, you know, the impact that you want to have, but then you've also got to operate a, a sustainable business that, you know, is, you know, profitable, that generates revenue so that you can have the impact that you want to have. And so the concept that that we like to think about is the wings of a bird. And you need both sides of those things for the bird to like, not just only fly in circles. And yeah, over, over the years, um, I've leaned more on the impact side and, and some of the years I've, I've leaned more on the financial side. Um, to the detriment of the other side kind of thing. And if you're only focusing on one, so it, you know, you really just want to balance that. So you're flying more, more straight rather than kind of teeter tottering and leaning in this direction, that direction. But sometimes, uh, sometimes we, we need to lean on one direction or the other. And in particular going into pandemic, yeah, we leaned more on, on the impact side on, you know, on the, the love side. And, you know, even just the, the name of the book, the podcast, Love as a Business Strategy, though that also is a bit of a, at odds with each other, right? And so, again, it is that balance. So we, we talk about the Wings of a Bird philosophy. We have an article on our blog all about that. It's in our strategic plan. We, we talk about, we center all of these things. And, and in the bird, it's more than just, you know, left and right wing. We talk about where the heart is and where the leadership is and where the tail is, to, you know, the kind of rudder, the, you know, the steer, steer and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, if, if folks are interested to learn more about our, our uh, philosophy around that. Um, yeah, because sometimes you do need to lean one side or, or the other side a little bit, a little bit more. And I think the more that you just normalize those conversations with the team, normalize talking about love, normalize talking about impact and sustainability, financial sustainability, like we do open book as well. We, we share our revenue numbers and that kind of thing. So these are all active conversations that, that we have um, so that hopefully it doesn't get to that place where, you know, people are feeling like they're, they're take, being uh, taken advantage of or that they're taking advantage of, of, you know, company resources and time or that kind of thing. Absolutely. That makes, that makes sense. And I feel like even, especially in technology, working in those types of environments, you know, the nature of the projects, the nature of the deadlines and, and needs, um, I think naturally can create a number of obstacles and, and stressors and things like that, that I think really, really, um, I imagine benefit from kind of the culture that you, that you built and that mm -hmm. you kind of aspire to continue building like do you have any anecdotes around specifically being in technology and why it's different i know you've worked you know in silicon valley or, or in the west coast what what's notably different what have you been intentional about being different when it comes to working technology with this mindset working technology with the mindset or like doing technology project i mean it's a technology company and you come from um you know you learned from i guess the environments that you know are prevalent in in the west coast things like that what are you doing uh different differently in terms of like specifically technology or your approach to doing technology projects with this with this mindset and culture yeah i mean another one of our values is is humility and you know i think big tech and tech you know uh tech technologists you know there's maybe a bit of like we have all the answers and we're going to design all these systems for people who are just going to use them and they're going to think it's awesome and we're going to do no harm and you know but the reality is a lot of a lot of tech is is built without consulting uh, the communities that um uh, that who will be using these technologies and so for us uh with you know an indigenous focus to our work we have a you know very comprehensive uh, process that we start with any of our projects and our partners from a place of humility where we say okay if we're working with knowledge keepers with community um, community people who um, are coming to us for the tech side of it you know we can be the experts there sure but when it comes to the why and the how like those conversations we're going to let our uh, the communities that we support lead us they're the experts they know um, 
uh, you know, their context, the, their communities the best. And so, you know, we go through our, our pathfinding process where we actually talk about values and we, we actually say, here's an Imiki's values. Um, are these cool? Do you want to, we want to weave these in, especially if it's from an Anishinaabe community, maybe, you know, but we work with so many other communities that are not, you know, don't have our seven values. And so we say, okay, what are your values? How do we weave that into the technology that we're going to build? And we talk about, you know, essentially risk mitigation of like, you know, what happens if, if the tech isn't going to meet your values, um, you know, whatever the specifics are. And then we have like a, a response to that. And we write all of this in before a line of code is even written. We talk about all this stuff and, and we talk about, um, yeah, other aspects within indigenous contexts around like United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. How are we going to respond to these? In Canada, we have the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, and so a lot of these things, I think if, if people went to another, say, software tech company, to build this tech there those things aren't going to be centered maybe as much as we would center them and so we we bake that into our process even before yeah a line of code is written that's awesome and that's that's the kind of stuff that i don't you know this, we're, we're living in a world that's in a way rapidly becoming more aware empathetic mm -hmm. understanding and desiring of of change social change and otherwise but at the same time, we live in a world that's kind of more capitalistic than it's ever been. Um, and also more about the bottom line than it's ever been. And, and seeing you kind of bridge that gap and finding a way forward is, is really, really impressive because it's, it seems to be at odds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, they say, uh, you hear people say that data is the new oil. And so there's, like, like you say, from that capitalistic perspective, um, you know, companies, you know, they're, they're looking to harvest data and, and extract. And from indigenous communities perspective, you know, we've had colonial groups ex extract a lot from us and, and, you know, now continuing through, through data and surveillance and data surveillance and, and other, other aspects, you know, it's, it's building the tech uh the tech that we build through our through our product and through through our services is you know how do we how do we mitigate that risk how do we ensure that data is is owned um and you know controlled and possessed and even designed by the indigenous groups that, that we support and of, of course you know we talk about our values and indigenous worldview through through all of that it's inspiring okay so what last topic here is what's what's next for yourself for anemone and kind of what's the i don't know you pick three year five year whatever generational vision of 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 success for you well it's awesome you mentioned generational vision because that is something that we we talk about uh, from an indigenous perspective there's the seven generations teaching that you know decisions from seven generations ago we're uh, realizing the effects and the impacts of those today and the, the decisions and actions that we we put now um, into into our day-to-day -day, um, into our communities and our people will be uh, impacted seven generations from now and so we really do like to think on a seven generations time frame and my my hope is that the the impacts that we're creating through our work, through our tech, through through Anime Key, uh, I, I won't be around to to realize uh, those impacts, you know, and um, you know, so so really just thinking when you think on on a, a large longer scale like that, you it helps, yeah, it helps guide and and these teachings are you know millennia old, these seven teachings. And so we know that um, they're going to be relevant seven generations from now. And so technology is going to change. The tools that we use are going to change. We're seeing this, you know, with, with crypto and Web3 and AI and all of these things. There's going to be new things come and go, but what's not going to change is love. What's not going to change are our seven values, Indigenous teachings. And so, you know, we know that if we weave these uh, these values into everything we do, that there's going to be some some longevity. 
on a bit more of a, a shorter time frame. I mean, we celebrate 20 years in business this year. Congratulations. Thank you. And I looked it up and 20 years is, is about a generation. So we're already one generation into the seven generations of potential impact that we have. And, and we're really, you know, we, it feels like every time, especially now uh, that I'm out traveling more in the community, every time I, I get out in the world, people, I'm, I'm hearing kind of echoes and ripples of the impacts that, that we're having. Um, and it's wonderful to see. And we have uh, seven years of social impact reports uh, on our site. So every year we've, we've um, yeah, we've published a, an impact report. And this year, because it was our seventh, we uh, centered it around all of our seven values. So you can literally go there and see love. Here's the things that we did. Um, so I mentioned a couple of those things today. If people are interested to learn more about how we, from a practical policy perspective, people ops perspective, what do we do? You know, we have the humility, we've, we've got respect, we've got all, all our, our values there. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to document the impact that we have. Um, and, you know, part of, you mentioned at the beginning, our social impact statement. Like for me, I, I see technology as a way for indigenous peoples um, to use technology for, to create economic impact and, and to create equitable outcomes for indigenous peoples. And so for me, yeah, the shorter term, the three, five, et cetera, year, this has been about bringing indigenous tech to the world. This is about bringing indigenous value. This is about infusing and in, in weaving in indigenous values into tech and hopefully being a good example of how we can try to do tech differently, how we can decolonize tech, how we can decolonize business and, and we values in and center love. Beautifully put. Jeff, I really appreciate you for taking the time today and sharing your story and the inspiring journey of Anemiki and all the things you're doing there. So thank you so much for this time. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you also to our listeners for continuing to check us out. Um, please look at the book if you haven't. Love is a business strategy, as always. And please subscribe, rate the podcast, do all those things because it helps us out a lot. And so with that, I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.